Okay, welcome back to AP Statistics. I'm not affiliated with the College Board. I teach at the world-famous Melvin J. Berman Hebrew Academy, uh, where they call me Dr. Kling. And welcome to lecture number two. Last time we talked about quantitative data. Today we, I want to talk about two other types of data. I want to talk about binary data, and I want to talk about categorical data. And then I'm going to show how the three uh, different data types are represented differently in the concept of sample space. Okay, so let's start with binary data. Binary data is any data that has two possible outcomes. So a classic thing would be flipping a coin. You could get heads or tails. Uh, another possibility would be a uh, taking a free throw where you either make it or you miss it. Um, you could ask somebody, do they lean Democratic or lean Republican? So with all these, um, so with all types of binary data, you can map it into, again, two possible outcomes. That's the main characteristic of binary data. Binary means that there are two possible outcomes and you can always map those into success or failure so you could say that heads is a su success tails is a failure making a three free throw is a success missing it is a failure um, you could say that if you encounter somebody who leans democrat that's a success or you could do it the other way around you could say define leaning republican as a success democrat as a failure you could how you define success and failure is arbitrary, but there are always two possible outcomes with binary data. So the next type of data I wanted to talk about is categorical. And there, there are discrete categories and to make it interesting there are more than two. So there are more than two categories. So I've always wanted, I'm favored random drug testing at our school so we could find out how many students have smoked marijuana. Um, we'll total up how many there, how many have done LSD, how many are on heroin, uh, maybe how many have done no drugs. And so we have these categories this category, this category, this category, and this category, we can count up the number of people in each of those categories and that would give us some categorical data. So again as a statistician I love to see that. Uh, another type of question we could ask that might be a little less controversial, we could ask students what kind of phones, that, cell phones they have. So some students might have none. So these are cell phones. They could have, somebody might have none, Somebody, there, some students might have iPhones, some might have Droid, some might have what I call an ordinary cell phone, you know, not a smartphone, ordinary, um, and some might have some other type of phone, you know, maybe a Blackberry or something like that. So you could have categories of phones and you could count up the number of students uh, with each of those categories and that would be categorical data and, and if you wanted to you could subdivide that you could have you could have your freshmen I'll just call this ninth graders 10th graders 11th and 12th and you could have data in all of those those would be called cells you could count the number of students so let's say you had uh, six freshmen with iPhones uh, 12 seniors, uh, 5 sophomores, 9 juniors, That would, those would be, that, so you could have categorical data in cells like that. Uh, these cells in case, in this case being cells in a table. Um, okay, so that's categorical data. The, the next topic I want to get to is sample space. So what is a sample? The sample space is a way of describing the possible outcomes with different types of random processes or random data. And so when you have binary data, let me scroll here. 
So when you have binary data, the set of possible outcomes has two possible outcomes. You can have a success or you can have a failure. With categorical data, you'd have to list all the possible outcomes. So let's say if we were talking about different types of cell phones, it could be you have no cell phone, you have an iPhone, you have a droid, you have a, um, a non-smartphone, what would I call that, ordinary, and then you had other. So that was the set of all possible outcomes. Now with what we studied last time, we talked about quantitative data. That's data you can measure on a scale. Then the sets become a little bit more difficult. We have to do intervals. So an example of quantitative data might be uh, how many hours a week you spend studying. So we'll call it uh, hours per week studying. And the most that could be, I think, is 168. At least it could be a zero. So what, but it could be any kind, you could have any kind of fractions in between. You could have 1.64389 hours and so on. And you wouldn't want to, you, you, you couldn't list every possible outcome here. You can't say, well, 0, 0 0.0010837, 0 0.0018388, it would just get ridiculous to try to list them. So what you do is you set up intervals and, so, and break this up into intervals. So we could say a low studier would be someone who studies less than four hours a week. And a moder moderate studier, let's say, uh, sorry, uh, this shouldn't be a zero. Let me cross that out. Let me make that zero is less than or equal to x is less than 4. So someone who studies with up to 4 hours a week, someone who studies between 4 and 8 would be uh, low moderate. Let's say someone who studies more than 8 hours but less than 12 a week is high moderate and then we have a real grind who studies uh, less th at least 12 hours a week. Okay, so there's so now we've broken the number of hours per week studying into four, into four intervals. Here's an interval, there's an interval, there's an interval, and there's an interval. And you could do something similar with any quantitative variable. Uh, if you had my uh, the baseball standings, where you can, where the the fantasy baseball league, a good team would have, let's say, 130 points, and a bad team would have 12. You could break the intervals into, let's say, 12 is less than or x is less than or equal to 40. That's a bad team. 40 to, uh, let's say, 60 is kind of still a slightly better team, but still bad. 60 to 70, yeah, I don't have to, have to equal, equal size intervals, by the way. That might be a medium team, and 70 to 90 would be a better team, and then a really great team would be greater than 90. So we've broken that up into intervals. Uh, the point here is that I don't like to see somebody when they're describing the sample space for a quantitative variable or a continuous variable, I don't like to see them just say, you know, let's say for the hours in the week, they just write this. So I say, I'll call that wrong, and the way, reason I call that wrong is because you, you're basically just saying there has to be an outcome. What, what I, a sample space is interesting because there can be different outcomes, but this is sort of saying, well, any outcome gets mapped 
to just to fall in here. And what I instead I would like to at least break it up into at least two outcomes and hopefully more. Again, uh, uh, I'll just go back and set, show the example like this where I've broken it up into four possible outcomes. So the point is with quantitative data we break it into outcomes based on intervals. So um, just to review everything so far we have binary two outcomes two possible outcomes categorical we have more than two discrete outcomes and with quantitative data we have to break into intervals so the outcome of quantitative data is defined in terms of intervals so I think that's it we'll see you next time and we'll talk about the multiplication of independent events